Uh, as Deb mentioned, I am a resident of Clareton. Um, I've been a resident uh, for 16 years. Um, and, and today I just want to speak about uh, the importance of having a, um, an alert system. Um, and there, there are many other things that can be done in the community to alarm residents. Um, so in, in terms of an alert system, um, just like the previous presenter um, stated, um, there, there is really no reason why residents should not be alerted when there's an emergency, um, when there's an, an emergency situation, an emergency environmental um, issue. Um, so in Clareton sits the uh, U.S. Steel Clareton cohorts. And um, just as an example, in December of 2019, uh, there was a, a fire in which residents were, were not informed of. Um, residents had no idea for weeks and some residents um, months later. And, and, and I could bet to believe that some residents still are not aware that that fire uh, took place. Uh, during that fire, um, there are there were a lot of emergency room visits, um, and and so if if residents were alerted beforehand, um, they would have been able um, to um, leave their homes and maybe go to a family member's home, um, so that they would not be affected, um, so that their health would not be affected. Um, so one of the things that I believe that needs to take place um, on a um, well, on a local, um, state, and also a federal uh, level, is that there should be an emergency system set in place um, so that residents are aware of um, any type of emergency situation, uh, such as the fire um, in December of 2019. Um, it's something similar to a, a weather alert in which we receive um, just a few weeks ago, we received a um, tornado alert that came through our phones um, and most likely through TVs as well. And uh, that alert could alert residents as to, you know, what they need to do, um, when they need to do it, um, so that they can protect the health of themselves and their families. Um, I believe another thing that needs to happen when there is um, poor air quality days, um, either red or orange air quality days. Um, residents also need to be um, alerted. And, a, and, and it needs to be uh, real-time alerts. Um, it should not happen um, an hour or two hours after the air quality um, is bad, but it should be in real time. I do understand that Allegheny County is making strides um, to, um, to do that, but it needs to be um, countywide, um, not just in the Mon Valley where um, I reside and many residents who uh, surround the uh, Claritin Coke words, but um, residents needs to, need to be made, made aware of uh, poor air quality days. There's, there are many residents uh, in uh, Claritin and surrounding areas um, whose health is affected on uh, poor air quality days. We have many children who have asthma um, something as simple as uh, putting um, flags throughout the city and, and raising those flags on um, um, red and orange days. Uh, for instance, um, the EPA actually has a program in which uh, municipalities can adopt in their, um, in, in their, um, in their cities. Um, and that, um, it's a, I believe it's called the EPA red flag program. And they, those flags can be um, placed in schools. They can be placed at libraries. Um, they can be placed um, at post at a post office, so that residents are aware of poor air quality days. Um, so uh, those are the things that I think that that need to be put in place. Um, I, I really think they really are no brainers um, to protect the health of residents. Um, one of the things that we are doing at Women for a Healthy Environment is that we are. Um, we are sending out text alerts uh, to residents who sign up. Um, you can sign up at um, 797-797. And if you text um, air PGH, um, you can get a text alert on um, poor air quality days. Um, if anyone has any questions, I will put my 
Um, I'll put my email um, in the chat. And I thank you all for your time.